Hello guys and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. Today we're building, it's not a very big house but it's one of those builds that just ended up taking me a while. It took me a while to get the floor plan right, it took me a while to get the design right, and then it was one of those houses that got a little bit difficult because like I got the kitchen the way I wanted it and then I had to match the rest of the house. This was I believe a six lunch break build. Um, just to give you a little bit of context, which actually isn't bad in the grand scheme of things. I'm not the craziest about the front porch area, but I'm really not certain what I would do. I'm also not the craziest about the left side of the house if you're facing forward, but it just, it stumped me a little bit because the living dining kitchen area is very, very loosely based on the Andy Griffith house from the Andy Griffith show, um, where uh, Andy and, and B and, and Opie live. Um, I really, like, their house feels very warm and inviting. The The decor is not. The de I went rogue on the decor. But the initial layout, I was kind of like, their house seems really cute and quaint. How would I get that layout to work in The Sims? And let me tell you, I have no idea because I did not accomplish it. I am so con it's it's a set, right? It's a TV set. So obviously it's not meant to make sense. But I cut so much of the floor plan out trying to figure out how to get that like that all to make sense and it just it didn't. And so I, I more or less gave up. But that's where the inspiration initially came from. That's why the floor plan might feel a little bit weird. Um that's also why there's like a formal dining room, which I very often don't do. Um, unless I'm doing like a very specific style of build or for a very specific like the holiday build um, Had a dining room for because I wanted a holiday meal kind of thing, but I don't often do um, Like specific dining rooms mostly because um, I don't think I know of anyone who eats in their dining room all of the time anymore I I our dining room is currently covered with my paint stuff Because <laughs> um, I needed a place to paint because um, my desk is always full of computer stuff and uh, I think my grandma eats at her dining room table when there's people around, but I know she eats on her couch quite a bit. Um, and I'm pretty sure most of my cousins eat on the go because they have kids, and so it's always like soccer practice or ballet. Um, anyways, the point being is like I don't often put uh, dining rooms in because I they don't get used a lot, and it's really hard to get your sons to all sit down for dinner. It is borderline impossible to get your sims to actually sit down uh, for dinner. So this I fought with for forever um, and we're moving away from it now because a speed build but for me it was a long time trying to figure out what to do with that alcove and originally I was like I'll just treat it like an alcove like I would in a newer house where like it's like a kind of a useless waste of space that you can use for storage or decor. I knew a lot of families growing up that had like weird alcoves and they would stick like vases and stuff in there. Vases. And uh so I originally did that and then I ended up just turning it into a room because the thing that I wanted is with this house, the like one thing I knew for certain is that I wanted kind of a raised dining space. I wanted an older style kitchen and I wanted in the evening times for the house to look very warm and inviting with all of the windows aglow, right? That is such a big thing for most of my builds and I don't talk about it a lot because I don't achieve it a lot in The Sims, but my favorite vibe is when a house in real life in a video game when you're like standing outside in the evening for whatever reason like for me each evening it's like when i go out in the winter time and it's already dark to feed and bring in and tuck in the horses for the evening get them all their little grains give them their little scritchies check for injuries nelly injured herself today so that's gonna be interesting um she's fine she just she just cut herself um, but like I'm standing at the barn hugging on my ponies and I look up and my house is all aglow with beautiful warm like incandescent light you know and like you can see the family inside and they're all that that kind of vibe that like oh I get to go be in there and be warm in a minute and, like my, my animals are all taken care of they're all cozy and warm in their little spaces their little lights are on except we turn them off in the evening so they can sleep uh, but their little heat lamps you know that that sort of vibe that like that like Christmassy kind of warm cozy vibe. That's what I'm always going for. And so that's why I hate blocking off parts of the house, especially parts of the house with windows, because like I play a lot with auto lights. So those lights are never gonna be on. So then I have to either remember to go turn those auto lights on or uh, just turn the lights on or turn them off in the morning or pay a little bit of extra bills. Although I think didn't James Turner recently prove that that doesn't matter too much. <laughs> I cannot remember. I have to go back and watch that video. Um, 
because someone was yelling at him. Yeah, I thought briefly about painting this house red. And watching this footage back, I'm not sure why I didn't. Um, I like the green. I love the, the um, cedar shingles from growing together. I think they just make for such a pretty little house. Um, I like the cedar shingles with the stonework and then with uh, like clapboard like this. I think it's really pretty. And I love the swatches we got. We got a lot of abilities to make these really cute, just like standard suburban, pretty little houses. Um, make really pretty little like Main Street America kind of houses. Which makes sense because this is a very America centric game. Um, and then I wanted a little bit of an. I wanted that look in an older kitchen that I try to achieve very often and I've, I've never gotten it quite right. Where it's an older kitchen but it's like top of the line old. Like somebody put a lot of effort into this kitchen when they created it. And now, yeah, it's a little out of date but it's nice. Like somebody cared for this kitchen. Somebody put time and effort into thinking about this like that you know that was kind of the vibe i think i got close with this one and i think a lot of it again not to harp on it comes down to lighting i'm really trying in my builds for the most part to not always use the the teeny saucer lights for gameplay the teeny saucer lights are by far and away the best because they light up you can actually see what's going on but i love the look of like an older yellowy like incandescent bulb or like lanterny type situation so i've been building a lot of houses with that lighting lately which naturally then lends itself to a little bit of an older vibe but i just think it's so nice and it's just like in my in my space currently right now i have all warm lighting which drives some people bonkers because they're like you can't see anything it always looks dingy and i'm like i don't think it looks dingy i think it looks cozy i do have one natural white light in here because i blew a bulb in a if i had a, a natural white just ready to go and it's so funny because when that's the only light on in here it looks so cold um with with all the warm lights in here it, it gives off a, a totally fine vibe like i'm totally fine with it it took me a while to get used to it though because it used to be a warm light in there and i was like ah it looks vaguely hospitally but because it's not on its own it's not that big a deal i like warm warm lighting um and on my monitor it's always hard to tell because one of my monitors is very warm tinted for some reason it's weird because I have what's supposed to be a very true light monitor on one side and it reads incredibly blue to me and then I have like a theater style monitor is what it was called at the time. I don't know. I uh, admittedly f fished it out of the trash. Somebody else threw it away. Um, I used to, I don't know if anyone else has ever done this, but like, so like schools, they get grants for new equipment occasionally and they are allowed to sell slash auction off a certain amount of it and some of it they're supposed to just trash. And if you wait long enough and ensure that they are getting rid of it, most schools will let you go dumpster diving. So for a long time, my chair was out of a to-go pile and this monitor um, was out of a get rid of pile. Um, and it's really nice, but it's very orange tinted. And I think it's because it's supposed to be like a movie theater type thing. I don't know. But, uh, so sometimes I'm like, ooh, that's really yellow, and then, like, I'll watch the video on YouTube on, like, my phone, and I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. So I can never tell. But I like warm light, so it doesn't bother me that bad. And I've been trying to use a lot more of the down lighting, um, situation, the, like, hanging lighting, rather. Um, because, like I said, with the little saucers, I get really in the bad habit of simply not using any other light. Um, I think, honestly, as weirdly as it sounds, Journey to Batu kind of kicked that, because Journey to Batu has a lot of really interesting like rusted lights almost but they don't read rusted to me they read very like almost like 70s if you shrink them down <laughs> when you put them in your living room they're like giant of course and i think i actually maybe do that in this build um they're giant you have to shrink them down using the uh the brackets keys um but if you do that they actually can read kind of funky and eclectic and they can read um a little bit 70s and i like that uh this was me trying to build like a built-in bar situation and just failing failing for forever. I struggled so hard with this. I could not get it right. Um, and the funny thing is, is it was the kickboard that was bothering me. Like it was the kickboard that was really annoying me. You will not notice this in gameplay. I never looked at it again after I built it, but I was so annoyed that I couldn't get the kick, like the, the footboard right. Um, and I'm still like looking at it. I'm like, eh, that was probably the best I could do. I never looked at it again. You will probably never look at that kickboard, but I cared. <laughs> I cared so much in that moment. Um, there are no computers, to my knowledge, in this house. Actually, having said that, there might be one in the parents' room. 
Actually, I don't think so. I don't think I ended up putting any TVs or any laptops in this house. However, there are plenty of places you could stick them. Not only could a laptop be used at this dining table, which would be easy enough. Kids can do homework and stuff there. There's um, places probably in the kids' room where you could stick a desk and a, uh, a laptop. And then in the parents' room, if there's not one, you could stick a, a laptop. As for the TV, it could pretty easily go in the dining room. Or, excuse me, in the living room. I'm losing my mind. Um, if you just swapped out, there's a radio is what I went with. Um, so you could swap out the radio for a smaller TV or move the bookshelf and get a bigger TV in. Like, it would still be a little bit on a wonk, but that's probably pretty realistic. TVs don't always line up perfectly. Our TV right now is on a wonk because the way the living room is set up, there's really not a lot of wall space. Um, on two walls in the living room, there's big old windows, which I love. And then on the third wall, there's like five feet, maybe. That's not even accurate. There's like four feet of um, paneled walling and then there's big old cutouts into the like entryway and then there's no fourth wall. So <laughs> that little, that little span of like four feet, that's where our TV is um, and it's on a wonk. Um, so like, yeah, where the, the, the radio is, you could put it. If you were kind of fiddly about it, I think it would be okay. Um, or you could put it in front of the windows too, which actually looking at this now, I think what I end up doing is I end up getting rid of that standing um, stereo there and I end up putting a little radio on that board, that sideboard, yeah. And then I think I end up putting a, um, I think, yeah, a bookshelf there. Sorry about the jumping back and forth. Unfortunately, in order to get all the footage in, it got sped up a little bit faster than I intended. I was also building weirdly fast. Like I said, this build only took like six lunch breaks, um, which usually a build like this would take quite a bit more. Um, but this was like, also one of those where it's like, it was weirdly fiddly for as small as this build is. I mean, it's only two bedroom, two bathroom. It does have laundry, although thinking back, I don't think I actually put hampers down. So there's a laundry set in here, um, but you would have to put hampers down to make it work. I always forget the hampers. Also, I don't think there's trash in the kitchen. So mark two down, <laughs> but there's trash outside. So there is a place for them to throw trash. I never remember trash cans in the, the kitchen either. I think it's because for me, I've always had my trash can in a cabinet. So like in my head, I'm like, oh, the trash is under the sink, even though that's not how it works in The Sims. Do we have a trash compactor in The Sims 4? That's a really good question. I know we have dishwashers. I cannot remember if we have a trash compactor. I know we have a trash compactor in The Sims 3 because I used it constantly. Because to me, I was like, this is the closest I'm going to get to um, having trash under the sink, right? So I know I know we had one in The Sims 3, but I cannot remember if we had one in The Sims 4. I really cannot. If we do, I've probably never used it or pretty close to never used it. I, uh, I see that I put lights up there and then immediately took them away and I totally get why because that would have been a lot of lights in this room But that was also a really nice glow and I do marginally regret not keeping that Now we're moving away from the placeholder stuff and actually putting in halfway decent beams and stuff I fought with this a little bit I didn't love the beams and I don't think I ended up picking one that I loved the most but it's close enough And then decorating the stairs is always so hard Because it's open like that so it feels like it needs something but realistically, nothing was going to fit there. And I was a little bit worried about it impeding Sims going up the stairway as well because their pathing lately has been a little bit weird. Also, I believe this house was before the railing bug. And I think the railing bug's been fixed by the time you see this. Um, but there's a chance that the gallery, you might have to replace the stairs if the stairs are missing. So I ended up going with a dark bathroom. I never do, but I was trying to do something different. I don't know how I feel about this bathroom, I'll be honest with you. I think it was good to try things, but I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I don't like red very much, so it should surprise no one that the red bathroom doesn't, doesn't work for me. <laughs> but, and here I removed all the walls because I was trying to put a curtain in front of the, um, laundry because in my head you would have that closed, right, when like guests are coming over stuff, because this would be your guest bathroom. Um, so you would have that closed so they couldn't see your laundry or couldn't see that, but then you could just like tie it up like it is to use your laundry. And I have done that in builds before, and it's totally fine. Like the Sims don't mess with curtains so they can walk right through. Uh, here's the part where I give up and wall this off because I didn't like the vases and I was over it. So I like fuss with it for a while trying to figure out what to put up there and I ultimately give up and wall it off. In fact, it looks like I cut that part out because I fussed with it for so long. Um, and then the little kids room, I ended up 
This was shortly after the forest nursery that was posted a while ago. Um, and so the little kids' room is like camping themed, kind of in the same vein of that forest nursery, but done a little bit older. Um, and I like how it turned out. The room is tiny. Um, and I think I have it set up. I'm trying to think. It's either a desk and a bunk bed, or it's two bunk beds. I honestly cannot remember now. This build, um, this build actually happened in October. And it's December 15th, so I, uh, I'm not entirely sure what I ended up landing on, but I do know it's, it's pretty cozy and it's pretty camping themed. And I like this bathroom so much. This bathroom has such like a nice antique vibe without being like too old. It's also giant. It is huge. It is almost the size of the kids room. <laughs> um, it is almost the size of the kids room, but for a family of this size, it kind of makes sense because like you only have two bathrooms in this house. Actually, you only really have one and a half bathrooms in this house because one, it's not a full bath. Um, when I say that, I think I explain this almost every build, but just for those of you who are not familiar, a half bath, I think that's a United States phrase, but I could be wrong. A half bath is a toilet and sink, but no, no, like, um, no getting cleaned up apparatus. So no shower, no tub, no shower tub combo, things like that. Um, we call them half baths because it's a, it's like a, basically a water closet. Um, so this one has one bathroom with a shower tub combo and one bathroom with just a sink and toilet. So it's one and a half bath, two bedroom, one and a half bath. Um, I think you could probably turn that laundry space into a shower and then have two full bath if you needed to. Um, which if you had more than two kids in this house, you would absolutely need to. You would also need another bedroom. So good luck figuring that one out. Um, I guess, technically, what you could do is make the, the living room smaller and then put, like, a dining space off to the side, like, closer to the stairs, maybe. Um, because you don't want to walk in directly to your dining space. It would make for a long walk to the kitchen, but you could make it work. And then turn the dining space into a master suite. Um, and then turn the master bedroom, as it is right now, into another room. That's probably how I would do it. But that would take some finagling. <laughs> that would that would take some work. And I'd still I would bet you 2380, I'd still probably have to pop a wall somewhere. And just you'd have to. But there is ways to grow in this house, and I think it's cute enough that if your little family was growing enough, you could make it work. Um and like I said, you could turn that second bedroom bathroom into a full bath pretty easily, I think. There's also a big front porch. Um, again, that was heavily inspired by the Andy Griffith show because they have a big front porch that they use for singing and picking and playing. Um, having said that, though, I didn't <laughs> really set that up. There's, like, a bench, but I kind of... It's kind of offset and a little bit weird. It doesn't read well in this house as it does, like... This, this would make total sense in real life because you'd have, like, it would... It would be with houses of its similar kind. The door would be a little bit more prominent. It would make more sense. In The Sims, it's one of those things that our brain doesn't like us doing. You know, kind of like a lot of houses don't look weird in real life, even if they don't have enough windows. But in The Sims, our brain won't let us leave just like a blank wall because it looks weird, right? Like we're, there's, there's a, a much lower tolerance for weirdness. Um, in The Sims than in real life, which is funny because like there's also aliens So you think we'd be cool with like super weird builds um, But the the front porch is being a little bit weird, but I do think I do think realistically it would be a beautiful place to play guitar and sing and Solve all the world's problems and have ice cream and pecan pie It could be I think it'd be lovely and that was the goal It does look like it goes entirely in front of the house. You can see the railing there, but I will say uh, That's a single tile. So that's pretty much for aesthetics that wraparound feeling is almost entirely for aesthetics. It's not for um, actual use. You'd have to pop it out a little bit more, which you could totally do. You'd have to move the house back on the lot, but the lot is big enough to do that. I believe it's a 30 by f mm, 20 by 30 lot. Um, so any any lot of that size, you could pop it back on and still get a bigger porch. But yeah, I took a lot of screenshots of this house because I really like it. See, it is set up for picking. It's just kind of plain and quiet. Um, and then those windows look directly into the kitchen. And I like that they kind of look like they could slide because then you could be sitting out on the porch picking and you could have the, the window, it would be the window over the stove, like kind of open and you could hear them picking and it'd be really cute. It's kind of funny. I just realized that I painted the ceiling in the dining room and then didn't paint any of the other ceilings. I'm so not used to that. I really should get used to the paint. It's lovely. Um, I'll go through and fix that before I put this up in the gallery. My gallery is almost set up to be where I can start putting things again. So 
hopefully soon you'll be getting gallery updates again that'd be really exciting but anyways i think i'm gonna go i hope you're having a great day and you're feeling loved and if you're not feeling loved please know that i love you i'm glad you exist i'm glad you're here hanging out with me you make the world a better place just for being you and i will see you next week around this time with another sims build i think it might be a living room maybe but we'll see these might go up in a different order i'll talk to y'all later love you bye